I read all the books, all the blogs, all the how-tos. But I ordered it over a month ago. I I'm holding the last bottle in my hand right now. I paid attention in school and I could run a salon in my sleep before I opened up Luma. I have guests who won't use anything else. What am I supposed to tell them when their favorite gel isn't in? But I think running your own business okay. is something you never <clears throat> yes, stop I learning understand. how to navigate. Well, There's just so much to think about every minute of every day. And if I don't do it, nobody else is gonna do it. Okay, well, lesson learned, okay. I mean, I know I'll make mistakes, but that's part of the fun of it. And finding creative solutions is my favorite part, usually. Studio Luma, this is Sylvie. Oh, you found my order. Yes, today would be great, thank you. <sighs> the day can only get better from here. Guess what I brought? There's no holes in it, so it can't be a puppy. Oh, please be food. Our paychecks? Uh, clean folded towels. <laughs> Anything to get out of towel duty, huh? <laughs> Ten minutes ago, I would have wished for a case of gel. <laughs> Donuts? Muffins? Bagels? You're close. Viv, you need to start eating breakfast before you come to work. <laughs> oh, sick. How is that remotely like a muffin? Is that sushi? A lot of sushi. Well... I had a coupon and it was about to expire, so I just thought. Smells like the coupon wasn't the only thing expiring. What's up? No. So, what's up? Mm. No. Ah, uh, no. No. You know what? That needs to be taken out of the studio before it stinks up the entire place. Oh, but it was made fresh yesterday. Mm -hmm. Or, hey, hey, that's my breakfast. Not anymore. Alice, have you thought about, you know, maybe why they gave a coupon for that? I don't know. I, I just kind of thought it was a good deal. I mean, maybe we should have coupons at Studio Luma. Sure. Buy half a haircut, get the second half for free. Well, I appreciate your enthusiasm. I don't really think that would work well here. You have to value what you can offer your guests. Then they value it, too. Good point. You get what you pay for, I guess. Hey, I left your breakfast out back in the alley with the stray cats. Um, good news is, is I brought in bagels on my way in earlier, and they're in the break room. You get a gold star. Brad, you're the best. And I paid full price. Mm-hmm. He gets a shampoo. Mm-hmm. Okay. Woof woof. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Studio Luma. I'm Sylvie, you must be Melanie. Oh, I guess I was waiting for your receptionist to check me in. I like to greet all my guests in person. I think a receptionist is a little formal. Let me guess. Poodle. Oh no, a palm. A red woof in? We have franchises in 17 states. Top Dog gave us four and a half wags in last month's Bark About It issue. And it's rumored that a certain reality star's nanny frequently leaves her shih tzu with us on long weekends. But you didn't hear that from me. <laughs> oh, what a lovely space. Is the owner new to the city? Thank you. Actually, I'm the owner. And I've lived in this neighborhood for quite some time. This has always been my dream spot to open up a salon. Can I offer you some coffee or some water? Coffee, black, thank you. Yep. So this is your space. <laughs> a fellow business owner. I'm in good company. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've definitely had some challenges, but I think Studio Luma is off to a great start. Uh, I'm sure once you work out all the kinks. It took me a while to get off the ground. 
build up my clientele, make a name for myself. Exactly. Got to get to know who the biters, the whiners, and the face kissers are. <laughs> I guess so. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, my station's right over here if you want to get started. Uh, oh, maybe he could be your receptionist. I'll take your jacket. Oh, thank you. <sighs> and then just watch your step as you okay. sit in. Mmm, good coffee. Please tell me you don't splurge on name brand. Well, I figure if I can't get going in the morning with bad coffee, I'm not gonna serve it to my guests. It seems like a lot of money to keep them happy. I mean, my customers are always happy and I keep the bells and whistles low. It's more about the belly rubs, right? <sighs> uh, so what did you wanna do today? Uh, I'd like the same style, but a okay. shorter, cleaner length. Okay. And no layers. I can't deal with them. Okay, so a one length haircut. I think that'll look great. Let's just take off the jewelry so I don't catch it. Okay. Oh, if you could help me with my necklaces. Oh, that'd absolutely. Be great. Sure. Careful. <laughs> I can just take that and. Okay. Hang it up right over here with your coat. All right, there. All right. There we go. So may I touch your hair? Yes, of course. <clears throat> yeah, you know what? I think with your lightly textured hair that a one length haircut will lay very nicely. Although a few layers Remember, would Remember, no layers. Got it. Okay, so um, what kind of shampoo do you normally use? I just usually buy what's on sale at work. But I know you get what you pay, pay for. for. Mm. You know, I think you'd really like what I have here. I actually developed it myself for Studio Luma. Excuse me, but you're not. Black Lab named Gunner. I know you look familiar. You remember I me. Do. Oh my god. <sighs> Gunner is technically my parents' doggy, but we grew up together, so and and he even gets along with Moby. Oh. I know. Thank you so much for taking such good care of him. My parents won't bring him anywhere else. And even your commercials are so much fun. When, when you're, you're taking, taking a trip, can't bring Rover or Skip, your canine will win, win at the Red Wolf Alice. Thing. Okay, sorry, yeah. Thank you, that was awesome. You have a guest. Sylvie, you don't understand. It's the best dog hotel in the world. You should totally get a dog. Agreed. I could even give you a coupon for your first day. It's, I, it's just that I'm so busy, but it sounds like a great place, really. It's a lot like Studio Luma. Okay, that is, that's super to hear that. Can you show me how short you think it might be? Absolutely, <clears throat> and it really just depends on where you want the length to end up. You know, I think, what about right to here, unless you wanna go longer, what do you think? That, that's fine, right. Right there. Okay. Woof. <clears throat> you know, Sylvie, I belong to an impressive group of women in business. We meet every other week, network, talk shop, have mm -hmm. guest speakers. Mm -hmm. I think you'd really fit in, and I know the salon would benefit. You know, I just don't have a whole lot of free time right now. I'm actually working on something pretty exciting. But I will keep it in mind can never network enough as far as I'm concerned. You're probably right. Why don't we head over to the shampoo bowl? I'm just gonna grab my stuff right here. <clears throat> All right. Okay, so we'll just head right this way. so good. Comfortable? Mmm, very. I might take a nap. <laughs> Sounds like you're pretty busy yourself. Oh, uh, you understand. Some days I wish I didn't. Mmm, 
that smells good. Thanks, I think so too. Maybe you'd consider making a switch from your usual... Poo poo. Oh, do you have any hair gel? I just ran out this morning. That makes two of us. Running three of the 17 Red Wolf Inns is the best job ever. I change lives. I get that comment a lot in the comment box up front. But it's a business, and it took a lot of mistakes to get where I am today. I just wish I had someone like me early on to give me some guidance. I like Sylvie. I really do. She's pure alpha. <laughs> I have a feeling she doesn't want my advice on saving money, though. <laughs> I've been thinking about some of the things you've said. But it's important to me and my guests that they feel special and worth the money and effort that I've put into Studio Luma. I guess it does make a difference when your customers can actually talk. <laughs> Most of the time, yes. <laughs> Sylvie's accomplished so much already. And her business sense? I don't know. Maybe she has a handle on all of this after all. I just wish I could help in some way. Maybe I could have her make something for me. Dog dandruff control? Husky hairspray. Mutt moose. Okay. All right, so let's get started. Right. Principles of a one length cut. More than seven billion of us on this planet, and like everybody else, each one of us is totally unique. Same can't be said of our haircuts. Whether you're in Paducah, Kentucky, or Paris, France, <laughs> haircutting is guided by seven basic principles. Sectioning, head position, subsectioning, finger position, guideline, elevation, and finger angle. We'll get around to all of them, but for now, we're focusing on the first five, because they come into play with the one length cut. A couple of things to remember as you get to know these concepts. Alter one of these elements and you've changed the cut. Ignore one and you've ruined it. Trust, your guests will know the difference. All right then, let's get to work. We start with sectioning, dividing hair into four areas to create a clear map to follow. This is the first step of every cut. Make a straight center part from the front hairline to the nape, going right through the apex. Make a second line ear to ear, again going through the apex. Secure the sections with clips to keep them out of your way. You might not think how a person holds her head has big time sway over the final shape. It does. There are two basic positions, upright, eyes looking straight ahead, and forward, eyes looking down. In the upright position, hair stays in its natural falling position or hangs straight down. Cut like this, hair looks like the bristles of a broom. Tilting your guest's head forward bevels the ends when cut, like cupping with your hand. With your guest's head in the correct position, it's time to subsection or divide the four large areas into smaller horizontal ones for easier control. Doing one subsection at a time, you'll make precise dividing lines like before, but this time work begins at the nape. Make up to one inch subsections, depending on the density of your guest's hair, starting at the center back. As before, clip the other sections up and out of the way. Anything less and the cut's a mess. Now's time to consider your finger positions. When your subsection is horizontal and your fingers are parallel to it, you cut a straight line. This creates the illusion of width by drawing the eye side to side. Cutting parallel to vertical subsections layers hair. This draws the eye up and down, making the hair appear longer. Diagonal positioning creates the illusion of a bevel. Last in our lineup is the cutting guideline, a section of hair that establishes length. It's both your starting place and reference point throughout the cut. There are two types. Active moves with you through a cut, in other words, your last cut is your next guideline. Inactive, hair is combed into the same position before cutting. In other words, your first cut is your guideline. Guideline location varies with each type of cut. Psst, when doing a one length, the guideline is the first subsection in the back. So there you have it, 
five principles of haircutting the world over. Everything you need to know to work with every totally unique guest. Four sections. Can't believe I'm still doing sections after all these years, but they really do work. Section from nose to crown and crown to nape. Everyone's head shape is a little different, so I'll find the apex, the highest point, and the parietal to see where my next part line goes. Precise sectioning means the haircut won't <clears throat> go to the dogs. Bad to the bones. We gawk, slow down, linger, maybe even stare. They're a crime, just not the kind cops investigate. We're talking seriously bad haircuts. The comb over, angry poodle, mullet. We've all seen them, haircuts we wish we hadn't. Like that pile up on the freeway though, we gotta look. They're wrong for all sorts of reasons, but have at least one thing in common. They try to fight mother nature and end up getting clobbered. Haircutting isn't just about cutting hair. Stylists who know what they're doing, those who cut hair well, they pay attention to the bones beneath because those help determine how hair behaves. Ignoring the bones can turn even a good cut bad, making you its accomplice. The head isn't a solid hard shell holding our ears, eyes, and nose, our brain. It's a collection of bones. Where they change shape or join up creates natural divisions, and knowing what to do at these points makes or breaks a cut. First, the bones. Then we'll circle back to what they mean. Parietals are the biggest. Together, they form the roof of the head and make up three areas, apex, crown, and ridge. The apex is the highest point, that upper round area just behind the forehead. If the parietals are the roof, this is the peak. The crown sits at the upper back where the head curves downward. It'd be ridiculous to try and wear a crown there, but know it's there and called that. The parietal ridge is above the flat sides and below the curved top. It connects the two like a bridge. Now drop the B. Imagine an invisible horseshoe-shaped line all the way around the head. Two smaller bones also make a showing. The occipital is the area around that jut at the back. The soft area beneath, where the head joins the neck, is the nape. These two words date back hundreds of years when we were still just making up language. So if someone ever says you're getting all medieval on them, toss out occipital and nape and you will be. Temporal bones are just lower than the parietal ridge and are the only flat parts of the head. Those areas you might massage during a headache? The temporal bones are in the same neighborhood as, that's right, the temples. Here's why all this is need to know. Smooth transitions within a style happen only at these natural dividing lines where bones come together or change shape. Try to transition anywhere else and you've got a pile up of your own. And if you don't know the bones and how hair grows, you can discover eye-popping thin areas or holes once you style the hair. The worst haircuts are that because they try to fight nature, either by transitioning in the wrong place or trying to force hair where it doesn't belong. Understanding how haircutting intersects with the parietal, occipital, and temporal bones will make you into a bad cut crime fighter and a bona fide hero to your guests. All right, let's clip them up, get the first one in, The second one, it's a twin to the one on the right side. Okay, two more to go. From these four main sections, I'll make smaller subsections. Subsections are building blocks to any cut, color, chemical service, or style. Make a clean, straight part line just above the nape, right side, and I'll do the same on the left. If the first part line is straight, that helps the cut to be straight. Subsections about an inch thick. If her hair at high density, I go less than an inch. All right, comb the hair down. 
The comb helps provide some tension, so I can grab the hair horizontally with my fingers and cut. Carry the same length all the way across. And this is my guideline. Balance is perfect. Moving on up, another one inch subsection. Horizontal subsections. Each new subsection has to be thin enough to see the guideline. Because it's a wider subsection, I'll break up the cut. Middle. Then the right side. Horizontal fingers, shears parallel to fingers, cut. And the left is what's left. Balance is excellent. Onto the sides, I'll make a long straight part line above the ear and bring her hair all the way back. Make my part line. Comb hair to its natural falling position. Find the guideline and cut. Transitioning onto the side. Turn her head so her shoulder's not in the way. I'm going to switch to my large tooth comb so her ear doesn't get caught. Hate that. Important to have a smooth, consistent line from back to sides. Balance. Mm. Back to side balance check. Done. Continuing with a new subsection above the previous one. Combing the hair back in the direction of the part line I want makes parting easy. A clean line where I want it on the first try, which results in a faster cut. Subsections thin enough so I can see the guideline underneath. Comb parallel to finger. Finger parallel to shear equals a great line. Cutting what I can control to about the second knuckle. Put some tension on the hair so it really extends to double check length. That's working. You know, she's got a lot of drive and energy. Maybe I should be open to what she has to say. Not sure what salons and um, doggy hotels have in common, other than maybe if I barked at someone for that gel order, I'd have it by now. Moving to the top. Not much is reaching, but that's to be expected. Good tension. A 
A one length isn't the most complicated cut, but it demands accuracy. Gotta watch your head position. Move it so it turns, but doesn't tip or tilt. Left side, same routine. Using the guideline in back to establish the length. Horizontal part lines, clean and sharp. Transitioning from the back to the left side. Head positioned. I've noticed that for right-handed stylists, the left side tends to end up longer. Not because they're bad stylists, it's just that righty's cut from right to left. And as the cut moves forward to the front hairline, there's a tendency to drop it a bit. Just happens. So it's important to make cuts parallel to the part line. And always check that lengths match up. No cheating in a one length especially with straight hair. Got to be spot on. Moving up the head. If the part lines are nice and straight, that helps me cut nice and straight. And of course, focus only on the hair I want to cut by clipping the rest of it out of the way. Nice, even tension. Proper head positioning, clearing on the shoulders. I'm taking off a couple of inches here. It'll make her hair move better. Gives it a little more swing. Balance check from back to side. Two more subsections and that completes this haircut. <laughs> ah, now Alice has me doing it. I think the consultation was great. This length and cut are really working for Melanie. I have to talk to her about investing in some product though. Maybe a detangler and moisturizer. Hmm, I'll hold off on the gel. Also, should get her in the salon for highlight retouches soon too. Detangler. Moisturizer, highlight retouch, got it. Check the mirror, make sure sides are even, good. Yeah.
Okay, this is just some gel and it's gonna add hold and volume while giving you a little shine during our blow dry. I should probably pick some of that up. I really wish you could. You don't sell it here? Well, I do, but I'm waiting on a shipment. It should be here any minute, I'm really sorry. Maybe I could try to find a stray bottle somewhere. Well, I'm sure whatever happened was due to miscommunication or oversight. You're right, it is it is my fault. Um, I'm really embarrassed. <laughs> um, can we, could I, I mean, um, my mom would love it if we got a picture together. Of course. Alice, why don't we wait until after her hair is styled? Oh yeah, you're right, okay, thanks. I'll go back later. <laughs> what do you do to those dogs? <laughs> Sylvie, have you thought about expanding your line? Actually, I have. Hmm. Okay. All right, Melanie, let's get this dry so you can see what makes my tail wag. Getting my sections in for control, Polish these ends, smooth out the strand, give it some volume and movement with my paddle brush. This is great because she can easily do this at home herself, if she ever gets to go home. The last section. Create some lift here on the crown while I'm polishing the ends. Her hair is so much more manageable dry. Gotta make sure she gets a leave-in conditioner. I wonder if she really does use dog shampoo. Yeesh. Perfect. These sections on top here should create some volume and lift. Awesome. This moves very well. Gorgeous length. So, time to get rid of those yucky ends. She really needed this. I bet her own guests get pampered more than she does. All done. Woof woof. You know, Sylvie provides something besides just a good style and product. I think I finally understand. This isn't just her job. This is her life, her passion, her, her family. I know a business is all about the bottom line, but how can you put a price on how you make someone feel when they walk out that door? I think Studio Luma will be just fine. I know I'll be back. We just need to get Sylvia a dog. And a catchy jingle. Oh. <sighs> when, when you're taking a trip, can't take Grover a skip. Your canine will win at the Red Wolf Inn. <laughs> Guess what just came? That better not be. Finally, my order. Uh-oh. When I was a little girl learning about the world and how to deal with new challenges and problems, Poodle -poo? sometimes, Sophie, a lot of times, things wouldn't work out the way that I wanted them to. ...to include four legs and a tail. And I would go and hide in the back of my closet in the dark and just wish that everyone would leave me alone. From one alpha dog to another, glad I could offer you some valuable advice, Melanie. And my dad would come and find me and he would say, <laughs> Sylvie, what you've got is growing pains. You better learn to love them because they're gonna be with you forever. <laughs> it must be hard getting all that advice you didn't ask for. As usual, he was right. She was is fantastic. Right. I took a ton of notes. I know Studio Luma is gonna go through some growing pains, but I am doing a lot of things right. My stylists are happy, I'm happy, and, and most importantly, my guests are tips? happy. Is it perfect? No. So are you gonna take any of her tips? Well, I promise not to change the coffee or make you guys go to the bathroom outside. But I may have a surprise up my sleeve. Hmm. Room for improvement? It's okay with me. I think I'm on the right track. <laughs>